going on till uh, tomorrow afternoon. Okay, here we go. There's one more sitting. All right, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel, and uh, you're here on Think Tech on a Friday afternoon. It happens to be day nine of the uh, of the IUCN, um, which is the um, uh, World Conservation Congress at the Hawaii Convention Center. And joining us is our reporter on the scene, Anu Hiddle. She is the host of Climate Change Beyond Outrage. And she has a special guest, Jennifer Icke, uh, who is a student, I take it, at the William S. Richardson School of Law, UH Manoa. Welcome, you guys, to the show. And listen, why don't you take, take it over from here, Anu? Thank you, Jay. Nice to be here. And I just wanted to say this is the ninth day of the Congress, of a 10-day Congress. And tomorrow uh, we'll go till about three o'clock. I think that the closing ceremony is sometime in the afternoon. There's one more sitting of the members assembly tomorrow when they will decide and tie up all the loose ends. But for all of today, there, there have been a lot of things going on. Yesterday, of course, we went out on field trips to actually go take a look at the, uh, the nature that we're trying to protect. So, um, but today there has been a lot of work going on on the motions. Uh, that were proposed earlier this year. And several of them were uh, voted on today. Jennifer, who is here with me from the School of Law, as you mentioned, UH William Richardson School of Law, uh, will be talking more about the motions. And uh, the ones that I was following were really about the Paris Agreement that IUCN has uh, endorsed that they should work with the, with the Paris Agreement. We'll talk more about that later next week. Uh, the other one, of course, is very contentious and uh, has been quite fiery, was the one dealing with domestic uh, closure of domestic markets for elephant ivory. So um, I'll let Jennifer take it from here for the ones that she's been working on. And then if there's a little time left over, you can ask me more about, about those. Thank you. Yeah, as Anu said, it's been a very busy and productive day for the ninth day of the Congress here. Uh, this morning, the assembly passed more than 10 motions on the floor, uh, a wide range of topics on those motions from everything from marine protected area expansion for the conservation of biodiversity to the establishment of a working group to explore natural capital approaches to conservation. And we passed a motion addressing the concerns over the use of lead ammunition in hunting among a variety of other motions. There are still a few remaining motions, which we expect will be voted on this evening, and if not this evening, then tomorrow. Um, another big piece of work going on right now is the Congress is working on a document called the Hawaii Commitments, which will outline the key outcomes of this conference, uh, areas of action going forward after this conference. And although the commitments are still in a drafting process, the environmental law program has proposed that we include a commitment to environmental rule of law in those commitments. We and feel. Could you explain a little bit about what that rule of law, environmental rule of law means? Sure. So mm -hmm. if you look at environmental regulations and laws that are passed around the world, including some of the soft law that we're forming here, uh, it won't have the impact that it can have if we don't have the judiciary, the courts, on board with that, well informed of the laws and able to enforce them. So we feel it's important to strengthen the environmental rule of law and make sure that that aspect of conservation is as strong as it can be. Um, the IUCN staff worked very intensively on this process. It's been a very inclusive process. They received more than 100 comments on the first draft of the Hawaii commitments. So they compiled those all last night. Um, we submitted more comments on the second draft today, and we're looking forward to seeing the final product tomorrow during the final sitting of the assembly. So that's where, there we have it. So these are the Hawaii commitments. You know, every Congress has something, some goals that the, that the body comes up with, the whole union comes up with. So last, uh, last time around it was in Jeju, so those were the Jeju commitments. Now these are the Hawaii commitments that will carry forward. Well, so I, we I just it. have one question, Anu. Uh, you know, uh, is Jennifer involved in the drafting of any of these motions? I'd like to know what's in a motion. Is it fact? Is it law? Is it data? Is it a combination of all three? Does it read like a legal pleading in court? Or is it some other kind of motion? Right. So, Jennifer, have you been involved in any of these motions uh, that were voted on today? 
Sure. I participated in uh, the contact group, which is a small sort of working group before the motion gets to the vote on the main floor. I participated in the contact group for the natural capital motion, which established a a working group so that the IUCN can explore sort of the pros and cons, the ethical considerations and the technical considerations of using natural capital approaches to conservation, which in some ways is essentially placing monetary value on different aspects of nature so that businesses and different parties can understand best what the value of nature is and how to take that into account. Um, So that process was really interesting. People had a lot to say about it. Um, Natural capital can be a very useful tool, but it also can sometimes miss the point of the larger value of nature, which always can't always be captured in numbers, but it was a very inclusive process. And I think uh, the assembly was happy with the motion that came out. So Jay, with the with the law students, what's happened is that they did help draft motions earlier. There were seven motions that we had talked about, which were done earlier in the year and voted on um, on the first day of the members assembly. So those were the ones that the law students had actually helped to draft with members of the community here in Hawaii. But these motions are ones that had come up from other groups. And in the contact groups for each of these motions, members have an opportunity to comment and help draft some more language and to come to a consensus. And that's what Jennifer was doing, was was helping draft some of these things after those motions had been proposed and so on and so it wasn't that she was one of the original drafters but she was one of, she was participating as part of the contact group okay Anu, when are we going to see you next ah uh, so you're going to see me next on tuesday because i won't uh, i guess the studios aren't open tomorrow but i will see you on tuesday at three o'clock hawaii standard time when i will be doing a recap of uh the congress and an analysis of the outcomes that's great Anu okay. Hiddle. Uh, joined by Jennifer Ike of the William S. Richardson School of Law, uh, reporting to us in uh, the series we've had this week, Five Minutes at Five. Sometimes it's been a little less, a little more. Um, here on Think Tech, uh, more specifically on climate change beyond outrage, and reporting from the uh, World Conservation Congress at the Hawaii Convention Center. Thank you and so you can much, follow- Anu. And you're welcome. And you can also follow us. People can follow us uh, and follow me tweeting at Anu underscore Hittel or with ThinkTech, which is retweeting some of my tweets as well. Thanks so much. And thank thanks, you. Jennifer. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha.